Welcome to the homework for lesson 16. This is module 7 of grade 3. And get your name on here first, please. And we're doing a little scavenger hunt at home here, finding the perimeter of five circular objects at, in, at home to the nearest quarter inch using string. So we're using inches, not centimeters. Uh, record the name and perimeter of each object in the chart below. Now, if you don't have string, you could use your sh one of your shoelaces if you have shoelaces. And you could use almost anything like the, the charging cord for a, a cell phone or something like that. Just anything that's, uh, you know, kind of like a string or a cable or that you can use easily to go around something that's circular. And I'm not going to tell you all the round things that you have in your house. I'm just going to do a couple of examples. Uh, one of them is uh, a CD or a DVD. So using this, I'm going to take a string. I'm going to wrap it around the outside edge of the CD. And then I'm going to hold my finger wherever it meets the end of the string. It comes back around like I put the end on around on the edge and then I come wrap it around and where it comes back to the beginning I'm gonna hold my finger there or mark it depending on what I'm using if I can mark it then I need a ruler Let me get a ruler you measure this in inches and it's more than 12 surprisingly I might have to mark and move here. 12, and then oh, about three and a quarter more. So I've got 15 and a quarter inches for a seat for a DVD. And something else that's round that's not too big because if you pick something really big it's going to be really hard to get the string you want to get something that the string can go all the way around um, I'm gonna measure a I have a bottle of aspirin and I'm just gonna go around you might hear it rattling as I wrap the string around it and there I've got the spot where it comes back around to meet the end of the string. Put it down. Lay my string out. I'm actually using the charging cable for an iPad. And using inches, straighten it out. Make sure I'm starting at the zero line or the end, depending on what kind of ruler you have. It has a zero line. And this is about eight and three quarter inches. It's almost nine all the way around. So that's eight and three quarter inches. I'll just write aspirin bottle. And you can find some other things like it. It could be a cup. It could be lots of other things. Um, just I'm looking around at my desk, and there's probably seven or eight other things I could use that are just that are circular that I could wrap around a, a phone cord with. So go ahead and do that. And then I just gave it a couple of examples there. You've got to really find what's in your house. Explain the steps used to find the perimeter of the circular objects in the chart above. So. Here's what I'm going to write is I used or I wrapped a string around the object. Marking it where 
or it met its end. Then I straighten the string out. Now this question looks pretty familiar. I'm pretty sure we've answered it probably a couple of times before. And measured from the end to the mark with a ruler. You might have a way to say it with fewer words, or you might have a, a different way to say the same thing, or you might have a better way to say it. Use your string and ruler to find the perimeter of the two shapes below to the nearest quarter inch. I want to mention this again because anytime you have to measure something on these pages, it's going to come out. Um, it, a lot of times the copy machines will scale it down to make more room in the margins. And so you'll never know from what you're measuring. For something like this, it doesn't matter that much really because your string is it's going to be just close enough and it's you know within a quarter inch you might be off by a quarter inch here or there but it should be close enough uh, the only way to get it the pages to be sure that they're exact the the what they're supposed to be is uh, uh, you have to if you're going to print them yourself make sure that you click on uh, your printer options the scale and write and put in that the scale is 100% because if you print it out normally the default is for it to, to scale it to fit and it'll shrink the it'll shrink all the images on the page to make uh, room for bigger margins so when I did I measured this it was pretty close to seven and three quarters seven and three quarter inches is what I found and for B for B, I got nine inches. Did you think they would be the same? Because I did. Uh, I'm surprised, although that B is kind of stretched out. I thought since it's kind of skinnier too, that would it would come out to be the same. But uh, it, it's not. It's actually more. Which shape has a greater perimeter? B. find the difference between the two perimeters. So that's going to be 9 minus 7 and 3 quarters. So when you're doing this kind of subtraction uh, with mixed numbers, first thing you want to do is just, especially in this situation, you're starting with a whole number and subtracting a mixed number. Just start by subtracting the whole number part of it. So 9 minus 7 it would be 2. So that leaves you to that leaves you with two and you still have to subtract the three quarters from the two. Well two minus three fourths you're still gonna have one and one fourth left. difference is one and one-fourth inches. It looks like an IH. Can you fix that? There. Describe the steps you took to find the perimeter of the objects in problem two. Would you use this method to find the perimeter of a square? Explain why or why not. So, we've answered this question many times before. I'm just going to write kind of the shortest way I can think of to write it. I used 
a string to go around the outside and measure the string. A square has straight sides. So I would has equal straight sides. So I would Measure one side and add it four times. 